A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of the recent discoveries coming out of a relatively distant galaxy known as 3C186. And specifically, this galaxy presents us with a very important piece of evidence for how galaxies grow, for how central black holes grow larger, and for what happens when galaxies collide. Because inside this galaxy, researchers recently confirmed that something really unusual is moving at 1300 km per second away from the center. And that something also seems to be very, very massive and produce a lot of energy. In other words, it seems to be a supermassive black hole moving super fast because it was basically kicked out. And so let's talk about why this is important and discuss the details from the study in the description. But I guess first, let's start with some of the mysteries and some of the unexplained phenomena related to the study, starting with the idea of supermassive black holes. Even today, after years and years of research, it's not actually entirely clear how some black holes become so ridiculously massive. For example, we know that some of the galaxies, such as M87, contain black holes that are billions of solar masses in mass. The one inside M87, the picture of which you just saw behind me, is at least 1500 times more massive than the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. Moreover, more recently, we've actually discussed a discovery of an extremely massive black hole in a very famous gravitational lens that was at least 35 billion solar masses. And some black holes, like the ones in Perseus A, are even more massive, basically defying all expectations and all explanations. And so for many years, scientists believed that there might be only two possible ways for these black holes become so massive. First one is essentially they were born this way. They were created really massive from the beginning of the universe and only acquired some mass in the process. Although in this case, it's kind of difficult to explain how and why. The second explanation is galactic collisions involving black hole collisions in the center with a lot of massive galactic clusters involving so many collisions over time that basically inside one of these galaxies, the central black hole just becomes ultra massive. And though maybe this explanation obviously makes a little bit more sense, here there's one important concept that kind of makes everything very difficult. This concept is known as final parsec problem. You can learn more about this in the video in the description, but in essence, based on what we know about black hole collisions and gravitational waves produced by black holes, theory predicts that for very massive black holes, as they come closer and closer together, they actually kind of get stuck in the orbit of approximately three to maybe four light years away from one another, the distance of approximately one parsec. And at this distance, these black holes will continuously orbit each other and probably never come closer because they don't produce enough gravitational waves, which is responsible for the collision of smaller black holes, and they don't have enough mass between them to reduce their orbital speed. Now, this was a very short explanation. The longer one is in the description, but basically because of this, this final parsec problem, researchers were not even sure if supermassive black holes can ever collide. And intriguingly, for many years now, we actually have barely found any signs of potential collisions and have never seen signs of supermassive black hole collisions anywhere or the result of these collisions afterwards. And so this could be the result of this unusual final parsec problem. And so if black holes cannot collide, how exactly do they get so massive? And well, to try to explain any of this, we obviously have to find more evidence and more examples of possibly various galaxies where collisions have occurred or galaxies with active black holes, which can only be the result of previous activity from maybe possible collisions, especially black holes that are maybe not exactly in the center, or even black holes that maybe escape the galaxy. For example, previously, we've discussed our neighbor, the Triangulum Galaxy, the galaxy that's literally right next to the Andromeda and will potentially one day collide with it, that we know doesn't seem to contain a central supermassive black hole. And one of the explanations here is that, back in the days, there might have been a collision that basically removed the black hole from the center because sometimes black holes collide in such a way that they produce what's known as the natal kick or essentially produce a recoiling black hole that moves really, really fast and escapes the galaxy completely. Several such galaxies have been discovered before, but we've never seen an actual black hole escaping. And that's possibly until now. Because this quasar kind of surprised everyone. 3C186 is a somewhat distant quasar in the constellation of Lynx and was previously detected to contain some kind of a core that seems to be actually cooling down. Now, because this is 8 billion light years away from us, it's not very easy to see what's happening here. But what was clear is that something in the middle of this quasar was basically causing the core to cool down as if it was becoming less active. But because this galactic cluster was one of the most distant ever seen to contain a quasar, 
All of this had to be imaged again with a bigger telescope just to see what's happening. Now, some of the previous observations in radio frequencies also discovered that this galaxy contains a jet, as most of them do, but the jet here appears to be slightly shifted and even perpendicular to the overall galactic arrangement. And that was already kind of bizarre. Now, inclined jets or even perpendicular jets have been seen before and have been explained through some kind of a wobble or changes in the inclination of the accretion disk, but having these two bizarre discoveries suggested this galaxy has to be studied in additional frequencies. And so, a few years back, researchers also used Hubble Space Telescope to try to see what's happening. And the Hubble observations were somewhat bizarre, because they actually discovered that the center of the galaxy, or the quasar itself, was slightly shifted away from the center. In other words, it appeared to be out of place. And so basically here we had three bizarre observations implying that something strange happened in this galaxy. Which of course meant we had to look at this galaxy one more time. And so now, seven years later, scientists used more powerful observations using very large telescope in Chile and Subaru telescope in Hawaii to see what's going on. Now, unlike Hubble, these telescopes are extremely good at measuring a lot of spectroscopy and can thus discover the redshift and the blue shift very accurately and find out the motion of things in this galaxy despite the distances. And so, by studying the distribution of stars in this galaxy and by looking at the quasar itself, which is the bright spot right there, they definitively confirmed that the quasar, or the black hole, was approximately 33,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. But much more importantly, they confirmed it was also moving away with a velocity of about 1300 kilometers per second. And this was the velocity predicted by a lot of studies involving black hole natal kicks and even the velocity we usually detect for hypervelocity stars that often acquire their velocity after interacting with a supermassive black hole. So basically here, the observations imply that something extremely powerful happened in the middle and made this black hole move super fast. And, well, right now, only one explanation makes sense. The explanation covered in the study by Marco Chaberge and his team. This had to be the result of a black hole collision where two supermassive black holes collided, receiving the natal kick that caused the central black hole to basically escape, which resulted in the production of what seems to be the fastest black hole we've ever seen. Although in this case, we're only seeing the light coming from the accretion disk that's turned this black hole into a quasar. But because this light seems to be blue shifted and blue shifted quite a lot, the only possible explanation is that this accretion disk and the black hole in the middle seems to be escaping the galaxy. And since the galaxy itself is also showing signs of a previous collision, a galactic collision followed by a black hole collision seems to make the most sense. And this would also explain why the center of the galaxy seems to be cooling down and also possibly explain why the jet seems to be crooked. All of this seems to be the result of the collision that completely changed the black hole's arrangement. Which of course makes this one of the best candidates for a potential supermassive black hole murder and thus potentially provides us with evidence that final parsec problem might not be a problem. Black holes can indeed collide. With this black hole, when it happened, very likely producing enormous gravitational waves, which caused the black hole to recoil in this way. And assuming this is correct, here researchers even provide us with the overall timeline. And so here everything starts with the black hole merger. The merger itself obviously takes a while, possibly up to about 200 million years, but the main collision event very likely happened 25 million years ago. This is when the final black hole acquired its kick. And though both black holes very likely contained the accretion disk, the new accretion disk possibly started forming in the last few millions of years. And it was only about 100,000 years ago when the black hole finally turned on and the accretion disk created a new quasar. This is based on the observations of the radio jet and the emissions around the black hole showing us the ionization of gas. And so even though the collision happened millions of years ago, this black hole remained invisible until the last 100,000 years. But it will probably stay pretty bright for a very long time, with the current estimates suggesting that this is going to remain a quasar for approximately 33 million years. And interestingly, during this time, this quasar will probably escape the galaxy, with the galaxy becoming barely visible, but the quasar remaining super bright for a very long time. And so, quite an exciting new observation and super exciting evidence. But obviously, this is just one of the potential explanations. Mostly because here, this is so far away that technically interpreting these observations and all of this light coming from this region can actually be kind of challenging and lead to additional errors. And that's because even in previous detections, some of these active black holes also appear to be moving way too quickly, even if they haven't actually merged. And so right now, this recalling scenario is the best explanation, but not the only one. For example, the alternative explanation here is that 
This is just a quasar in a much smaller galaxy nearby, and the two galaxies are maybe not even related. But because this is such an exciting discovery, we'll probably hear more about this in some of the future studies. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.